All right, taking a closer look at the first playoff game on Saturday. It's TCU in Michigan in Glendale, 4 o'clock Eastern time. TCU out of the Big 12 coming off their very first loss of the season in the Big 12 championship game to Kansas State. Michigan unbeaten and the touchdown favorite here. Let's go out to Glendale, side of Saturday afternoon's game. Dennis Dodd joins us. Going to look at impact players for both sides. Let's start with TCU and a wide receiver who is likely going to be the top NFL prospect, but a guy who's been pretty banged up the last several weeks, Dennis. Yeah, Quentin Johnston is Pro Football Focus's wide receiver one, the number one receiver to go in the draft, so a top five pick, 6'4", over 200 pounds. But Chris, he's been bothered for the last about six weeks, so almost half the season by a high ankle sprain. He told me during the uh, media, media availability today that he's about 85%, and Max Duggan, the quarterback, went on to say, well, 85% of Quinton Johnson is pretty good, and it is, but it has affected his production. Now, if you look at his numbers, he's not to 1,000 yards. He has been dominant at times, but talking to Sonny Dykes offline a little bit, not as dominant as maybe they thought. Now, now, what does that have to do with Michigan? Well, Michigan, at least in the second half, shut down what many people think to be the best quarterback room in the country in that big Ohio State win in Columbus. Uh, but, you know, TCU does have some depth. Four of their, their top four receivers either have four touchdowns or five touchdowns. So the productivity is really spread out uh, beyond Quentin, jo Quentin Johnson. So I would look for him. I would look for Michigan to try to man him up early. Uh, and if they can get by with that, because he told me, Quentin Johnson, that really the only team that tried to do that with him was Kansas State. And Kansas State has run press coverage on receivers since Bill Snyder was there. I think Michigan will try that. If they can't handle him, then they'll go to more maybe a shell or zone look. But I would look for that to be a big factor. He's their number one threat over the top. Could be a top 10 pick in next year's NFL draft as well. We're going to talk with Ryan Wilson more about the draft prospects, not only in this game, but the other playoff semifinal game in just a little bit. The guy throwing him the football, Max Duggan, just an incredible season. He really burst onto the national landscape this year because of what he and TCU have done. But Dennis, this is a guy who has been the quarterback there for TCU for many years. It just took a long time for him to have this kind of success. Ability about to start his 42nd career game playing his 47th game for TCU in his fourth year, and he's going to play in his first postseason game. Now, we're not counting conference championship games. We're talking about postseason game. Uh, Sonny Dykes said, you know, in his comments that he thought Max Duggan should go on the Mount Rushmore of TCU greats before it's all over. And we're talking about LaDainian Tomlinson. We're talking about Davey O'Brien. We're talking about, you know, some of the best play Andy Dalton, some of the best players of all time, a guy that he had, what, 30 touchdowns this year, only two interceptions, incredibly efficient in what he does. And I think his, you know, if there's a stamp that people remember him by, it's that playing to exhaustion against Baylor in the championship game of the Big 12 where he was doubled over. People thought it was in pain. No, he had just played that hard that long. Um, and he's the heart and soul of this team. So as TCU goes, as Max Duggan goes, TCU goes. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.